Hello, my friends, and welcome to another issue of Midweek Encouragement. <clears throat> it's a joy to host you today. I'm so glad you've come, and uh, I, I pray that this will be a blessing to you. If you'll get your Bibles, please, and open to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. We'll read some verses here in just a few minutes. Uh, we're, uh, I'm sharing with you this year a, some devotionals by Will Graham, Billy Graham's son, and they're call, it's called The Suffering of the King. And so for the next, for today and the next four weeks, we'll be looking at this, uh, <clears throat> this series of devotionals uh, about Jesus, about his crucifixion, and about his resurrection, and the life that he offers to you and me. We want to look at uh, Matthew 27. I'm going to read starting in verse one, uh, verse 11, excuse me. And so if you want to follow along in your Bible, let's read right now. I'm going to skip a few verses. I'll let you know. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, Governor Pilate, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, You're the one who said that. So when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, Jesus gave no answers. Then Pilate asked him, don't you hear the testimony that they're bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now you recall that <clears throat> the, the, the Romans had a tradition that each year, they would, uh, they would release a prisoner from jail, uh, a prisoner of the Jews' choosing. And so um, Pilate gave them a choice between Jesus and Barabbas, uh, a murderous, insurrectionist rebel. And they said, no, we want... Barabbas. We want Barabbas. And Pilate said, Pilate asked them, but, but what has he done? What has he done? Uh, and, and they said, we don't care. Crucify him. And then the governor asked, what do you want me to do then with Jesus? And they screamed out, crucify him, crucify him. And he said, why, what crime has he committed? And they shouted even louder. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but instead a riot was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I'm innocent of this man's blood. He is your responsibility. So you see, Easter exists because Jesus died for your sins and my sins. And he conquered the grave. We know that three days after he was crucified, Jesus came back to life. We celebrate Easter because death lost its sting with Christ's triumphal entry. Sadly, though, many people have never experienced the true meaning of Easter. They may know about Jesus, but they can't or won't make a decision about him as their personal savior. In the Bible, we see this man, Pilate, who will forever be linked to the Christian celebration of Easter. Pilate talked with Jesus directly, face to face, he evaluated, he was greatly impressed with Jesus, but Pilate couldn't decide what he needed to do with Christ, just as we read. Let's take this scripture apart just for a couple of minutes. First thing, Pilate rejected Jesus' own confession about who he was. Jesus stood before the governor who asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, you're the one who said that. Well, Pilate asked the question. Pilate heard the answer. 
from the mouth of God's Son himself, Jesus himself, but he took it no further. Second thing, Pilate rejected clear evidence of Jesus. Pilate investigated Jesus and came to the conclusion that he was innocent. He had done nothing wrong. He had committed no crime. Pilate realized that the only reason that Jesus was on trial was the envy and the jealousy and the hatred of the religious leaders. Even, he even appealed to the crowd, that crowd who was accusing Jesus, and said, what has he done wrong? What evil has he done? What crime has he committed? And then third, Pilate gave in to the pressure Verse 24, Pilate realized he was getting nowhere, that a riot was beginning. Though he heard the claims of Jesus, he still knew Jesus had done nothing wrong. Pilate was compelled to sentence an innocent man to death because of the influence and the fear of the crowd. He feared man rather than fearing God. Last of all, we saw that Pilate tried to cleanse himself by washing his hands, cleanse himself from the death of Jesus. He knew that he had just condemned an innocent man to die. So in a symbolic gesture, he washed his hands in front of the people. Now it meant nothing. He made him feel better. And then he said, I have nothing to do with this innocent man. It's all on y'all now. So understanding and pronouncing that Jesus was blameless, Pilate projected his guilt onto the crowd, hoping to assuage his own guilty conscience. You see, my friends, Pilate had a decision to make. He knew the truth, but he couldn't take a stand one way or the other. Instead, he asked the question, what shall I do with Jesus who's called the Christ? And you know, that's still the question today that so many people are asking, uh, perhaps even you. And people still have a hard time answering it. In far too many situations, people know the truth, but like Pilate, they give in to the pressure of the crowd and they walk away from Jesus, putting off that decision for another day. But truth be told, indecision is a decision. Making no decision for Christ is making a decision about Christ. By not surrendering your life to him, you're rejecting the claims of Christ that he is the Son of God who died in your presence, in your, in your place, not in your presence, excuse me. If you've been putting this off, the decision to follow Jesus and make him Lord of your life, now is the perfect time. Jesus' death and resurrection, which we celebrate as Easter, paved the way for you. I encourage you to receive that hope and accept him as your savior today. Maybe you've trusted Christ in years past, but you've, you've just kind of drifted away and not remained faithful to him. What a tremendous opportunity the Easter season is to recommit your life to Christ and say, Jesus, I know you already live in my life, but I know I've drifted from you. Would you reclaim me as I reclaim you? Help me to live for you. Help me to act like someone who loves you. May I pray for you? Oh, dear Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on that cross for us so that we could trust him 
as our only Savior, as the only one in the whole world who could ever take away our sins and our guilt. Thank you for taking the punishment that I rightly reserved, that I rightly deserved. And God, I pray for men and women, boys and girls who might be listening right now who need to surrender their life to Jesus or perhaps recommit their life to Jesus because of a salvation maybe years ago. God, help us to act like people who love you. Help us to be Jesus with skin on so that when people look at us, they can ask, why is your life so different? And we can point them toward a decision to trust Jesus in this Easter season. Hey, listen, thanks again for joining. I love you. It's a great privilege to be your pastor. I look forward to seeing you soon in person. But please, if there's any way I can help you, any way that I can pray for you, call the church office and we'd be delighted to pray with you over the phone. I love you. Have a great, great day. Looking forward to Easter.